Okay. Hello, Bahare. Thank you for um, joining our percussion hang. Hi, Kleine. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so in case uh, you don't know, if you're watching and you don't uh, know, Bahare and I met at Cal State University Northridge in the late 2000s. We were both in the music therapy program there. And uh, she is a percussionist uh, from Iran. And are you in Tehran right now? I am, yes. All right. I'll take your word for it. I don't know. <laughs> I am. Can you hear me? I can, yeah. We can hear you pretty well, but it's better if you get closer to the, yeah, because you're on yeah, your phone. I, so um, I, am in, I am in Iran. Terence, all right. I am in Iran, yeah. And it's evening there and it's morning here. But thank you so much for taking the yeah. time. Of course, I know you're. Time. Yeah, I know you're busy, uh, but I sent everybody Bahre's uh, website, which is what is it? Bahre MTBC? Is that what? It's uh, BahreMT.com. BahreMT.com. All right. Yes. And that's mainly, is that mainly the music therapy site? Not like not performance yes. and stuff? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, okay. Actually, oh, uh, you, you're talking about the website? Yes. It's uh, it's actually the combination. Okay. Uh, it's a combination of both, both music therapy and my performances, um, my music, my compositions. Yeah. Okay, good. So that's a great place, uh, everyone, if you want to find out more. And I, I do want to, I'm glad you mentioned that, Bahare, because I don't think people realize, you know, a lot of the people I have on here as guests are composers, are recording artists, are working in bands, and you're also doing music therapy work. So you do you do everything. You're yeah, I'd like to maybe have you talk a little bit about you know without going too far into history or getting too detailed. You know, uh, I think it's amazing. I mean, you're you're from Iran, and then we met in L.A. and you were living here at the time, but you were going to Northridge. What? You know what led you to that journey because you're you're a working musician so people ask me that so i'm gonna ask you that why why did you go into music therapy uh i've uh, well i've been a musician for many years i started off uh, playing instrument by the by the age of four um and all these years i just performed and uh, practiced a lot but um uh, after I got my bachelor in music education, I was uh, I've I've always been interested in helping people at some point. So I decided to move to United States and to continue my education in music therapy. I uh, I've done some research and um, I've, and I I found out that this is exactly what I would love to do, and that's kind of what led me to uh, study music therapy. And um, so it's great, you know, I can do both. I can do both music therapy and still doing performances, you know, uh, recording, composing. Uh, it's great. So I can have both. Yes, absolutely. And everybody, again, um, it's BahareMT.com. Yes. So you guys go there and... and see what she's doing it's pretty amazing now you are a percussionist but you also because i've heard you play piano i know you're a good pianist and you also play some string instruments uh is there anything you don't play <laughs> <laughs> yes i do not play uh i do not play wind instruments and of course i don't play like the violin um uh, uh, there are so many instruments I don't play, but I do play also a lot of instruments. And uh, and what I like about uh, have that option is that when I do compositions and I uh, when I compose my own music, I play all the instruments myself. I might have like one guest or two guests over to record, you know, uh, probably like an instrument that I personally don't play, but. I usually play all the instruments and I mix it together. Mm. Right. 
And that's handy. So you're like Prince. <laughs> <laughs> the princess. It's, fun for uh, me. it's, it's very fun. What, yeah, it is. And so I could I bother you to pick to get a, one of your instruments there? Uh, maybe we can start with a drum and then see what else you have. And if you don't mind, I know this is not a performance or a lesson, but just to show people one of your your main instruments. Sure. Um, I do have uh, my tone back with me, which is my primary instrument. Um, this is the one that you and I played. Uh, I think uh, last year. Uh, this is called Tombak. It's a, uh, uh, it's a, uh, it's my primary instrument, and it's a very, it's a main uh, Persian percussion instrument. Um, so yeah, it's uh, with the natural uh, wood and uh, sheepskin, and uh, you you want me to play something or uh, a little bit. Okay, sure, sure. Uh... Beautiful. Thank you. It's amazing how, you know, many different techniques you just used uh, and so many different sounds. It is, yes. It's uh, all your 10 fingers are moving around. <laughs> and, I, you know, if you're watching, you know, you guys see, I know the sound isn't the best, but you can see that that is a lot of years of practice right there. That's a lot. Fo focusing into this one moment, but there's a lot of years behind that. Um, yes, indeed. And that, you know, technique, what's, what I think is interesting about this whole category of percussion and drums is that, you know, when you, I remember when you were in LA, remember, and you were, look, you were shopping around for Latin percussion and you got bongos and you got congas and, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's fairly easy for any percussionist, hand percussionist, to move what I would I think of as sideways, right, or what we could you could say pivot, to use a, a popular word, uh, to incorporate you know other drums and percussion instruments from other genres or styles. But what's interesting about that to me is that you can also use your techniques that you have. So you could use like tombak techniques maybe on bongos, right? Or on maybe a, a little bit on congas, although I know it's a different angle, but. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So do you do that? I'm assuming you do that. Uh, have you, where, how, where's the balance between, you know, trying to learn bongos as like a, like a Latin, somebody from Cuba or some, or a Latin percussionist versus a Persian percussionist playing bongos. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, uh, when I started off uh, trying to play the uh, uh, bongos and the congas, uh, I well, obviously I I try to learn the the Latin rhythms and the techniques. And uh, after a few years, I try to combine some of the Persian's rhythm with uh, with this Latin percussion, and it sounds awesome. And uh, mm. that's what I, that's what I'm using in my own recordings, uh, in my own compositions, uh, so that I, I can technically I can combine a Middle Eastern rhythm with like Latin uh, or, or Western uh, rhythms, you know, all together. Um, as far as the techniques, it's hard to uh, it's 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 different, you know, to use the the techniques that I use for tone back, let's say on the uh, congas, it's kind of not really practical. It's doable, but it's not really practic practical. But as far as the rhythms, I can easily uh, switch and combine the two rhythms together. Is there a recording or 
something that you could share with people, like a link or anything? If you, if, if you, if you can think of one, maybe put it in the chat. Uh, not, you don't have to do it right this second, but I just want to put that out there for you, Bahare, that if you have any links or anything for people, um, you can maybe type it in the chat. And, and also for people, uh, for everybody watching, if you guys have any questions for Bahare, you can also type those in the chat um, so she can see them and I can see them. Make sure you chat to everybody, send it to everybody. Um, and you can ask a question that way um, because right now everybody's muted just to keep the, no the, the interference level down. But um, yeah, in a minute we can also open it up for, for actual verbal questions. Um, now, <clears throat> let's get back to music therapy for a second. You know, I think most people, well, most people may not know, but we know that music therapy is a fairly old profession and much more developed as a profession in the allied healthcare field in the US, um, maybe in England a little bit, um, and, and some other countries. Japan has a, has a growing music therapy population profession. But in Iran, it's very small, right? Can you talk a little bit about the, you know, the, your successes and your challenges in Iran as a as a music therapist? Uh, when I moved back to Iran uh, about six years ago, uh, it was tough. You know, I, I uh, it was hard to kind of um, talk about it. Uh, I mean, people. When you when you say, "Oh, I'm a music therapist," the the very first thing that comes to their mind is that, "Or, oh, oh, what do you sing? Or what do you play? Uh, you know, what kind of song uh, should I listen to when I'm depressed?" You know, these are all the <laughs> type of questions that you. you are, I'm I'm sure you also uh, hear. Um, I mean, I wish it was that simple, but it's <laughs> as you know, it's more complicated. Um, it was very tough. It was hard uh, to kind of educate people in Iran to about what the music therapy is, what the what's their benefits, and how we use it, where we use it. Uh, so I've done a lot of different uh, workshops and seminars and speeches. Um, maybe the easiest uh, uh, the easiest way to kind of uh, explore it was through group sessions for me here in Iran mm. and um, and uh, you know drum circle uh, as one of the techniques in let's say for maybe like just uh, typical people not even specifically for uh, people who are having uh, you know with, uh, with special needs it I started off with that which was a little bit more uh, convenient for people to observe and to understand the concept of this is maybe just one, only one technique in music therapy that we use in group sessions. I'm talking about drum circle, obviously. Um, um, and that kind of uh, was a little bit uh, easier for me. But then uh, I started, you know, having other people uh, talking to me about the, uh, you know, their relatives or friends' needs uh, with uh, like autism, brain injuries, uh, substance abuse, uh, mental, uh, intellectual disability people, you know, and uh, so one-on-one -on -one clients. Uh, that's that's how I did, but I kind of decided to work private because. Uh, it's it's really I think it's the I mean I I was a little bit conservative myself because I've been traveling back and forth uh, I didn't want to be in a, you know in, in trouble uh, advertising about what the music therapy is and I didn't want to be uh, become a popular or famous music therapist and people um, just uh, it's hard to explain uh, it's just like religious. Uh, Mm. Uh, way I'm, I'm trying to explain but uh, so I just decided to keep it quiet and keep it very private uh, so I just had this a very big space uh, for group sessions um, and uh, also private clients but it was 
it was tough and it's still tough. It's getting better. Uh, but I think uh, there's so many people, uh, not so many, but I've, I've, I've met with some people that have been uh, introduced themselves as being a music therapist, but they were not a music, there was not, they were not like a board certified music therapist. And uh, when I asked them how you define yourself as a music, you know, how you define music therapy, the answers I would get was uh, not really right. You know, mm -hmm. because some people think that if you are, if they are a musician, they play an instrument and if they have studied psychology, then, oh, they can be a music therapist. No. Mm -hmm. Right. No, it's, it's, different. it's different. It's yeah. different. Yeah. Or even, of course, and, you know, I know people aren't here to necessarily hear about music therapy, but it, I think people are curious about it. So we can touch on it a little bit. But yeah, music, just so for everybody listening, music therapy is not something that you just decide to do. That, that would be like saying, oh, I'm just going to do physical therapy now because I'm a yoga teacher, or I'm going to do talk therapy because I'm a life coach, so I'm a therapist now, or something like that. It's the same thinking. So remember, music therapy is a profession. It is a degree. There is certification. There is an internship. There is board. You know, it, there's a lot to it. But um, yeah, I, I understand about maybe wanting to, to keep yourself a little below the radar, especially because you were traveling back and forth uh, yes. to the U.S. and back into Iran. And I got to say, I, I hope things are getting I hope that's getting easier. I know for a while, obviously, it was uh, politicized and a lot of things were politicized and it was harder for you to to travel back and forth. Um, so hopefully now that's getting better. Um, so we can have you out here on the on the West Coast <laughs> more often. We can get together uh, and play. I, I like to shift the attention maybe to do you have another instrument that you could share over there? Because I know yes. people like to see. Yeah, see sure, something well, a little bit different. I have another. Uh, these are these are the, uh, the only the percussion in uh, the drums, my drums I have with me. I mean, I can grab a string instrument if you want, but uh, I have a DAF with me. It's a frame. It's a big uh, Persian frame drum. Oh, yeah. It's loud. Mm. It has, uh, you know, all the rings here. So uh, this is how it sounds like. <laughs> Thank you for that example. Again, sure. I know uh, I know what the DAF sounds like, and I know that the uh, internet is not helping right now. But <laughs> it's a, it's good to hear it and get a little idea of what it sounds like. Um, thank you, and that that is a beautiful drum. Uh, I think somebody asked a question. I don't know if Bahre, can you see the chat? Um, I'm pretty far from my computer, so um, I don't. I don't see a chat. I don't think if it's open for me, you might okay. uh, want to. All right, let's do this. Who, uh, if somebody could raise their hand, and then I will. Um, I'm going to ask you to unmute. I think we could maybe have some questions. So, just if somebody has a question, if you could raise your hand, and then I want to unmute you. So, anybody here with a question? No. Yes. No. Okay. I'm not seeing anybody raising their hand, but if you have a question. If, if at any point anybody you have a question, just raise your hand and then I, I can see you on the side uh, and I will unmute you. All right, so I'm not seeing anything right now. Last call <laughs> for hand raising. Uh, all right, we'll get to questions a little bit later. Um, so could you talk a little bit about what what's happening now and into the future? Like what, what you know, in terms of drumming and percussion, What's your plan? Um, it's been a very tough year for everyone, uh, all of us, especially musicians. Um, 
I, 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 you know, it was like about a month ago that I felt like, okay, now I feel like I'm scared a little bit because like everything is through, uh, through Zoom, from uh, all this, you know, uh, crazy technology where I cannot really feel, I cannot go to concerts, I cannot see anything live anymore. So, uh, but everything is, is, uh, I thought, okay, it's it, it's temporarily, it's not permanently, so we should all be uh, patient. But uh, for me personally, um, I'm, I'm doing a lot of, uh, you know, over the past year that it's been very tough with COVID. Uh, I, I started, I recorded a lot, done a lot of compositions. Uh, uh, at my own home studio, but uh, I'm kind of uh, gathering and collecting all this, hopefully to be able to perform live in the future. Um, for me personally, uh, my goal is eventually to move back to US so that maybe I can have, uh, you know, better and more opportunities as far as, uh, you know, my career, my uh, music therapy, both music therapy and performances. Um, and also to be able to reconnect with people and with other musicians to uh, perform and to play music. I, 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 that, that's something that I really miss, you know, just being uh, able to see people, to see my musician friends, to say, hey, let's have a music jam. You know, it's, uh, uh, it's been it's been it's been a tough year, so that's that's my goal. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I was in US, uh, got back three weeks ago, did my vac uh, vaccination, and I'm glad. But you know, you just have to wait for everyone to get vaccinated and to everything to get settled down and to get back to normal. So I I, I think I'm I still need to wait for another few months to see what happens and then to give it a try to see if I can uh, get things done again in US. Good. Well, if you need anybody to write you a letter of recommendation, just let me know. Okay. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll petition we'll petition the the White House to to have you back. Uh, as a valuable yeah, as a valuable mu musician resource. Um, could you Talk for a second about because we talked about music therapy, but there is that middle area, you know, of just wellness, right? Like uh, recreational music making. You mentioned drum circles. I know a lot of people here might be curious about like going to a drum circle just for their own kind of enjoyment or fun. I know a lot of people like to get together, as do I, and play with other musicians because it's it's fun, it's enjoyable, you know, it's it's somewhat therapeutic. So I, what I want to ask you is, what does that look like for you? Are you finding time? And I realize that as a professional musician, sometimes it's harder to get for us to get out of our brain and of our analytical mind and when we and play music just just to relax or just for fun. Is that something that, you know, how how has how is that uh, have a presence in your life now or are you using music making in that way or not, or how does that, so I'm talking about just, you know, your own use of music for yourself, like therapeutically. Right. Therapeutically. Um, well, uh, as I said, unfortunately, because of this, the whole situation, I haven't been really able to play music with anyone except maybe one or two people. Uh, so, uh, I, I do have a room with a, like over 40 instruments. And what I do is that I, uh, through the Logic, uh, I use the, the software called Logic Pro. And uh, through that, I just uh, tr try to, um, you know, like the same you do, you, you loop like on the loop and I do, you know, add layers and just try to have a jam with myself. Uh, just it's just me you know uh, mm. that's one way I do the other way I do is that I might uh, play one of my uh, 
preferred song and I just uh, play along with it, you know? Mm. Um, and if sometimes I just play a solo, uh, but very moody. I, I, I've, I've been very moody with uh, the choice of instruments. It's not that I play one particular instrument every day. I, I switch, I change. Uh, that's that's how I that's that's what I do. That's how I work now. Hmm. Understood. Did yeah. I, did, I, did I did I answer your question or was yeah? It I think so. So so I understand, and and I do the similar thing. So if if you have the technology and you're you know if anybody has the technology for looping or a, a digital audio workstation like Logic Pro, you can layer in, and that's yeah, that can be really fun and exciting, and you know, creative. Uh, and it's a way to use your different instruments, like you said, with yourself, like jamming with yourself and layering. I'll do that too. I like to put the looper on sometimes, you know, and just experiment. And it's always nice. You can just erase the last thing if you don't like it or move on if you do. <clears throat> Layer things and change. Um, in fact, I did some of those as live. Um, I did the, that live looping thing. So I put, you know, there's a couple videos I put on YouTube of doing that. And it's... It is fun. It's it's a nice way. So that's the, the techni techno technology the side. Only, yeah. Yeah. The only issue I have with that is just that uh, when it comes to technology, sometimes I I don't have patience. Like for me personally, I just want to perform. I just want to play. So I rather someone else do the you know uh, little stuff. Uh, that's why I I forgot to to mention that. Uh, uh, my cousin and I, uh, we uh, we made this band. We created this band a few years ago, um, and uh, this is this is exactly what we do uh, every summer when he comes to Iran. Uh, we create, we record a song, a new song, um, and uh, this is exactly what we do. Uh, He's genius. Like he, he sings. He also plays, but he mostly do the uh, uh, does the the lyrics. He's a poet. He's really good in writing po uh, lyrics, um, and he's really good with the technology. So all the technology part he does, that part, and I do other part, which is uh, playing or the instruments. Um, so we we created this band a few years back, uh, and uh, it's all experimental, and that that's what I like about it. Uh, you you can find uh, so, some of the songs uh, uh, on my website. In fact, our latest song I released just a few days ago in Spotify, iTunes, and also it's available uh, in SoundCloud. And what I like about this band is it's just, just two of us. Uh, we compose, we arrange, we, uh, we both sing, we play all the instruments, we produce, we do, we do everything. Um, and it's, it's all about mostly improvisations and it's very experimental. Mm. And the whole, the whole music is the combination of Eastern and Western music. So you will, when you listen to especially the last song, uh, the latest song that is just released, uh, it's kind of in a, like a deep house genre, deep house mode, but wow, uh, it's very nostalgic for us. Uh, and uh, we came up with all these great rhythms, which is combined where, by both Middle Eastern and Western. Uh, so I always, you know, uh, let him to do all the technical part with logic. I rather to just, uh, do the, uh, just, uh, the playing the instruments. So you can also check that out, uh, if you have time, uh, on Spotify. The, the band is called Sarab, S-A-R-A-B. Uh, so far we have five songs. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's pretty unique and it's very different. So you may want to listen to that. 
I, I absolutely want to listen to that. That sounds really uh, exciting uh, and interesting. And, <clears throat> you know, I'm a big fan of improvisation too, but the creativity and the, the background that you both have, that sounds really perfect. And to have just a duo and be able to do everything start to finish is, is exciting too. Yeah. It's very fun. So, so just to, um, recap the other kind of things you were talking about, cause I, cause I recommend this for everybody, um, as that in that kind of therapeutic self care category is to also just pick up an instrument, like you said, and play, uh, and, you know, pick up different instruments, depending maybe on your mood or, or maybe pick up an instrument that you feel like you don't even want to play, but just pick that up and work through it, you know, and find all the, find some stuff that you haven't found before, um, like an explorer, you know, um, <clears throat> because that can be a therapeutic process of discovery and, and kind of working through some uh, resistance to new situations or something like that and get in, right. try to get into that flow state, you know, where uh, you're not really thinking about, you know, past or future, you're just in the moment. I think that's one of the things that we can all relate to as musicians that when we're jamming, you know, not necessarily taking a lesson or performing, but sometimes when we're performing, but I mean, just for me, it's more like when I'm by myself with an instrument and I can just listen to myself improvising, you know, right. like, it, so I'm perform half performer, half audience <laughs> and I'm observing myself, but I'm not judging too much. I'm just kind of like experiencing it. Um, I find that to be somewhat like a vacation, like a thought vacation. Right. Um, we have a couple questions. I, in order for me to read these, I have to, unless people want to ask them, if you raise your hand, you can, you can ask it verbally. Otherwise I have to lean forward to read it because like I said, I'm like two meters from my computer right now. <clears throat> so, um, does anybody have a, a, a question they'd like to ask? just raise your hand uh yes okay so let me ask Oop. let me ask to okay you're unmuted hey 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 go ahead hey yeah <laughs> yeah you answered my questions just as i typed them oh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's really cool i look forward to hearing this band with your cousin I love those improvised ideas. And you said it was in the vein of like house or trance as well. Yes, the, the, oh. the very, yes, the very last song, uh, we released, uh, it's, uh, it's deep house. Okay. Uh, it's about like eight minutes, eight, eight, eight and something. Yeah. Eight minutes. And I don't know how many seconds, but, uh, it's almost eight minutes and, uh, it's deep house and, uh, uh you will, uh, hear a lot of uh, different uh, Middle Eastern instruments and also Western music instruments combined together. Now, do you use odd time signatures within sort of the ns, ns, ns? Like yes. you weave in between like that? So you've always got this constant ns, 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 and then you weave inside, I guess. Uh, yes. You will, uh, if once you once you start listening to it, you will see how it changes. But it has it has the same uh, beats uh, playing over and over and over. Okay, but, cool. So uh, yeah, yeah. The the this particular song is called Shada. Shada is a S H E I D A. Uh, <laughs> I, I haven't posted that song uh, on my website yet because it just released just a couple of days ago. I was so busy. I did not get a chance to do that. I'm going to do it hopefully by tomorrow or Monday. But uh, you still can, if you have an account on Spotify, or you can easy, also easily as, uh, search it on iTunes. If you just type it down, Sarab, and which is the name of the band and the, the name of the song is Shada. You will find a song. Okay, cool. I look forward to listening to it. Sure. And, and maybe even trying to play to it. <laughs> uh, that would be fun. Maybe. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Yeah, sure. You're welcome. 
maybe uh, Bahare, if you if you have the time, I know you're busy, but if you have if I have the time, you know, one of the things that I try to do with World Drum Club is play music or create music, but then also give people, you know, something to to take away from that in terms of like a beat or a rhythm. So maybe if you want, you know, I know people like to learn. I don't know if it's possible to like pull, you know, a little rhythm pattern or a riff or a little figure and notate it and then stick that somewhere where people can see it on your website or something. But that might be a nice way to, you know, take something that's tangible and, and specific uh, from the recording, if it's possible, mm -hmm. I don't know, and then uh, put that out there for the percussion uh, student, you know, community. It's just an idea. Yeah, it's a good, good idea. Yeah, I can do that. More work. <laughs> it's yeah. more work for you. <laughs> uh, okay, did some, I don't know if somebody put another question or, so, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't read it. Let me see. Let me lean forward for a sec. Oh, okay. So the name of the band, name of the band. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> I think we're good. So um, let's think about uh, if anybody has any questions. I don't want to keep Bahre too much longer, but yes, you have a question. Uh, it's Vic. Let me see. Yeah. Hi, Bahre. My name is Vic. I am curious about when you do your music therapy, is there a particular what is the particular instrument that seems to be most attractive to your patients? Uh, you know, uh, that varies a lot. It depends on a patient that I'm working with, and mm -hmm. it really depends on what uh, kind of interventions I'm using. Uh, you know, that's, that's really hard to say uh, because some people, some patients, uh react react to like uh, a guitar some uh, patients react better to drums they even want to uh, play the you know to try the drums themselves uh so it's really hard to say that you know i think it it, it really depends on on uh, the 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 person that i'm working with I but so. as, as, as far as my own experience, when I personally have like a little drum with me, I usually have a little drum. Uh -huh. And uh, when I have the patient sing along with me something and I do uh, accompany with a little drum, they always mesmerize and interested uh, with the sound of the, you know, little drum. Maybe it's just, just the technique or, you know, and they they try they want to try try that. So I, I would say it's not. I'm not saying this because drum is my primary instrument, but I'm just saying that based on my own experience, uh, for some reason, uh, drum has been more uh, interesting for so many people. But as I said, it really depends. Some some uh, patients have a better reaction to other instruments. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Of course. Anytime. Yeah, I I would just like to add too that uh, what you know I I don't do a lot of music therapy these days, but I do see a group with traumatic brain injury who is mostly adults, and um, I bring a variety of things, uh, including an extra ukulele for people to strum. Um, shakers drums i i think we we often use drums because they're fairly easy for people to participate on a drum right it's basic uh just like when we were little children i remember i actually have video of when i was on romper room one time and we were marching around and i was playing the the sand blocks uh on romper room and people were playing sticks and drumming you know so it's very easy for people to participate and i think that's a good reason to have drums, but in terms of the music that you play, Bahare, I, I can also echo what you said, is that people will respond um, partially to the instrument, but let's not forget that it's not the instrument so much, it's the sound of the music that we're playing. So yes, you know, the instrument, of course, is where it starts, but it's not, 
it's it's the music that's coming out, right? That's the most potent okay. element, I think. What do you think about that, Bahre? Like in terms of um, yes, exactly. I I totally agree. Uh, especially when we improvise, when we uh, make the music in the moment with the patient, you know. Uh, Overall, is the is the sound of of the the, the music that it's uh, that it's uh, we we're creating at, in that moment. I totally agree. So it's not specifically one instrument or two. It's the that's why so many people, especially like in the group sessions, uh, most of the group sessions I have, people really enjoy playing instruments, playing music together because they really enjoy the sounds of like the whole thing that is coming out from the whole group. It's not only one instrument, but I always uh, encourage them that, you know, uh, let's try to listen to each other, hear each other out, not only focusing on yourself. Try to even, you know, if it's, a, I, doesn't matter if it's a big group or if it's a small group, try to listen listen to each other absolutely uh, yes. yeah so i i totally agree it's it's uh, the the result is that uh, eventually it's the it's the sound of the music it's not a particularly one instrument right because also you know different instruments can have similar sounds and similar instruments can have different sounds depending on how you play them um, but I want to also add for Bahre and for any of you who are looking to accompany, you know, any kind of singing or group drumming, and it, aside from the instrument choice, right, the, one of the most important things is the ability to play a rhythm that sounds good, that sounds like music, it sounds musical, to, to, and to keep that rhythm regardless of what else is happening because we know that if especially in music therapy settings people are not they're not drummers they're not percussionists or musicians necessarily that's not their job and and we're not trying to make them into that we we want them to feel like they're participating as much as they want but we also need to have what i call fortitude which is your ability to maintain what you're doing steady beat play the rhythm, sing the song, you know, also pay attention to everybody at the same time, motivate people, pay attention to their needs, while you have an opposing force coming down upon you, which <laughs> in the form of a lot of people who are not playing together. And that yeah. is a skill. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes, it, is, it is a skill. It's yeah. absolutely a skill. That's why I'm saying that when, when someone tells me, hey, I, I'm a music therapist, I'm like, you know, where did you study? Like, oh, I, I haven't studied music therapy. I, I just, I know, I know I, I play, you know, violin and I studied uh, psychology. I'm like, well, well, that doesn't mean that you're a music therapist. You have to have some qualifications also uh, besides, you know, the course and, you know, the board, everything, the, the practice, the other experiences you have, you need to have those skills, uh, how to conduct, how to lead, how to support other people. And especially talking about rhythm, uh, it's, it's uh, interesting enough that there are still a lot of uh, uh, music therapist, uh, I think you and I had this conversation a few years back. Uh, they still, I mean, even even though they're, they're, they're studying music therapy, but they were not good in uh, keeping the beats, you know, and, uh, and that's why uh, uh, I know that, you know, guitar and piano are, and vocals, voices, you know, it's, it's very important. But uh, I would probably pay more attention to percussion side because uh, rhythm, uh, it's, uh, it's the root of, of music, you know. Uh, music is all about rhythm. Uh, impeccable 
musicality and sense of rhythm is, uh, is the key for succeeding as an instrumentalist. And without good rhythm, uh, you will easily get lost in the music and uh, be out of sync, you know? Uh, so yes, I think it's, uh, it's very, very hard to control everything, you know, especially the, the rhythm. And that's one of the, the main key uh, in our field, in music therapy field. Yeah, and in music, like you said, you know, there's a, a, a lot of people have said this, but I'll say it again, just in case you haven't heard it, because uh, I think it's a good example or a good argument. So a lot of people have said, if, if you have a band, let's say you have a rock band or pop band, and you have a weak rhythm guitar or even a weak singer uh, or piano player in the band, um, and, but you have a strong drummer, the music is going to sound better than if you yeah. have everyone else strong and a weak drummer. It's if, true. If you're, yeah, if your band has a weak drummer, everybody knows. Everybody notices, and it, the whole thing sounds bad. But if you have a strong drummer, um, you can have a couple weak members and still pull it off, you know, and still it'll be acceptable. Um, so, yeah, rhythm without the without a solid foundation. And this is why I always recommend everybody practice with a metronome, you know, play with a track, play, practice with music. Like you said, Bahare, play along with your favorite, your preferred music. Um, because rhythm is, it really is the key. And I just want to add, and this might sound like I'm complaining a little, I'm not really complaining, I'm just making an observation. And that is that um, as, percuss as a percussionist, I am a little taken aback by this idea that everybody seems to have, which is drums and percussion are so easy, let's give them to everybody who doesn't know how to play music, as if that's like a solution for them playing music. Um, on one level, yeah, it gets like, I, and I already said that it gets people involved, but drums and percussion have been marketed like they're easy, right? It's easy for people to play drums and percussion. And I disagree with that on the musical level. It's not easy. It's easy to physically hold them and play them and make sound. It is not very easy to make music on drums and percussion. And my evidence of that is hand anybody a shaker or a triangle or a basic or a little drum and ask them to play something, play some music and then see how that music sounds and see how it sounds compared to, you know, what we typically do on drums and percussion. It's not it's not the same thing at all. It's it's something completely different. And, you know, so let let's I, I would I just want to push back on the idea that drums are somehow basic, you know, or easy. Uh, they're not to no, play music <laughs> on a drum. Yeah. Right. To play music on a drum, to make people feel the beat and want to dance and move is it takes just as much skill as any other instrument. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's, that's, that's why, uh, that's why, uh, I think, uh, they have to pay more attention, uh, to, uh, for music therapists, especially for music therapy students who are studying music therapy at school, they have to, you know, give that, give like, pay more attention and give more credits for, you know, learning drums a little bit more professionally than just making a sound on the drum. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's not about, uh, being hard on people it's and but i think we we shouldn't lower the bar to make it to, like to give people a successful experience you know that's not the way to do it what we should do is encourage people to do better and give them the tools that they need to do better to do the work and become better and become more skilled and then everybody wins you know the the musician wins because they're they're more skilled and they have a higher quality product now, it doesn't matter if you're out there, a lot of you want to play with your friends, right? You want to play jam with your friends and family and just play music. Some of you might want to perform. Uh, some of you may want to go into a profession that uses music, like music therapy or music education. But the, the path to all of those is quality. 
and quality, you know, you, you can't buy it. You have to, you have to do it. it. You have to take the journey and put in the time and put in the attention and the focus. And that starts with, with really respecting, you know, the, that journey and, and not, um, not trying to bulldoze the mountain down. <laughs> you got to climb the mountain. You can't just flatten it. Uh, right. By by saying oh well, this is easy or it doesn't matter or, I'll play whatever you know blah blah blah, but um, I I'd like to wrap up if you guys have any more questions feel free to raise your hand I can unmute you um, we've I Bahare you've been very generous with your time and I want to thank you so much. Uh, thanks uh, of course I find it's always good to talk to you and uh, thanks for having me. Uh, on your meeting, it's my pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Any, so last call for questions or comments, anything else? Yes, uh, go ahead. Yeah, if I were to do say a crash course in the rhythms that you love to play, would, the, would I find them on your website? I'm sorry, can you, can you repeat that one more time? Oh yeah, okay. If I were to say, try a crash course on the rhythms that you like to play, are they available on your website? Kind of like for beginners, an introduction. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. So you have some instruction on your website, Bahari? Because I haven't, I haven't seen that. Uh, it's not, it's not specifically in, on my website. Uh, as far as uh, I thought that uh, you mean. Uh, if you want to learn like some, if you are interested to learning some, uh, you know, rhythms that you, you, you hear, you can have an instruction. It's not on the website, but um, if you email me, uh, the, all the, my contact uh, information is all on the website. I can uh, guidance you, I can uh, help you out to, to learn those, uh, if 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 that's uh if i'm if that's that's the that's your question yeah that's my question and you'll probably hear from me over the next couple of weeks okay sure. thank you sure awesome okay well i think we're good i think we can leave it there and i want to thank everybody for joining us again thanks for being a patron of world drum club and thank you again bahare for everything you're doing and being so generous with your time. Yeah. Um, and I hope we get to see you back here in beautiful, sunny Southern California pretty oh, soon. I miss that. I miss it every day. <laughs> you know, you might as well wait till summer's over though. It's so hot right now. So we'll see you maybe in, in the fall. How about that? Fall, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, thanks everybody. Thanks for joining us. And as always, um, you know, we I'll be putting more stuff up on on the World Drum Club Patreon and on the World Drum Club YouTube channel, uh, and then go visit Bahre at. Uh, is there another? Now you we we talked about BahreMT.com, but is there another website that you have for? Is that the no, the website? No, no, this is the only website. Okay. All right, BahreMT.com, and and then you can search for Bahre's name. She's all over. The interwebs. I mean, just search her name, and you'll you'll find a lot of stuff. YouTube videos and pictures of her holding a drum, looking off into the <laughs> distance, thinking about something important. <laughs> <laughs> she has some really beautiful photos. I'm I'm kind of jealous. I want to have photos like like she has. Like I'm gonna do that, Bahre. I wanna. I'll do it with it. I'll do it with a shake today, though. I'll be like. <laughs> it's funny because you know I'm right. You know, it's, it's interesting because I, 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 I ne I've never really posed for a photo. Those, those photos just was captured while I was uh, playing. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, they're great. I love those photos. Really nice. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bahre. Uh, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sure, Thanks for joining. Bye.